Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some important food news, but you know that's kind of what I do oftentimes on this channel. Um, welcome back to Danette's Kitchen. Um, there have been some food recalls, and you know, when there's food recalls, um, and, and that recall is issued through the Centers for Disease Control, or the Food and Drug Administration, or... Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, speaking for us in America, when we have those kinds of food recalls, it's really significant because of the steps and the processes that we go through to make sure that food is healthy and good for people to eat and safe for people to eat. So I only have a few food recalls for today, but I did want to share this information with you today. And then... Um, I have contact numbers if you wanted to contact the companies um, for a couple of these. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section. Please like, share, subscribe, tell other people so they can get to know about what's going on. Earlier today, I did a video on, do you know what... Do you know where your food comes from? Do you know what you're eating? Are you reading the labels? Are you aware of where it's coming from? Because if it's being imported from another country or another place, sometimes those import imported foods uh, are not taken through the same process as what your home country uses to ensure that there's food safety. Like... I live in upper Midwest of the United States, and some of the easily, most ready, readily available foods that's either available in food shelves or in the stores, some of that stuff is coming from on the other side of the world, China, Mexico, Egypt. Not that I have anything against food from Greece or any of these other places because I do, in the earlier videos that I've done, I, I do make, prepare foods from other countries, but if you got a can of applesauce and that can of applesauce is from China, why do you need applesauce from China if you're living in the United States with all our apple trees? Shouldn't we be able to get fresh applesauce from the trees that are grown here locally? You know, there's a lot of questions coming to my mind. But check out that video that's earlier today, May 20th, 2021, if you are interested in those things or pondering the same kind of thoughts that I am. But anyway, on to these um, food recalls. And these three places have issued independent recalls and I'm not sure what process they went through in order for them to get to that. If the FDA came in first and said, aha, I see this. And they said, oh, we're going to recall it or how that process happened. But these three did issue independent recalls of some of their food product. Number one, um, Primary Colors Design Corporation is a the name of the business entity, and they are issuing an allergy alert on undeclared egg in their Peppa Pig chocolate chip cookies. First of all, I didn't even know Peppa Pig had chocolate chip cookies, but hey, Peppa Pig's got a clothing line, dolls, got all kinds of stuff out there, so why not a chocolate chip cookie? I personally thought that all cookies are made with eggs. Well, the cookies that I prepare are made with eggs. So, But perhaps they forgot to put that on the label and for legal and liability issues that they have to have that on their label of their product. So, Randall Food Coloring Food Company also declares uh, a voluntary recall of their beans with the, the Randall um, beans, cans of beans. So that's just another random food recall, which there have been a lot of 
recalls of canned beans lately for improper seals or botulism or listeria. So we know that having food allergies listed on the products is important. And we know that if something isn't sealed properly or there's a potential of listeria or botulism, we know that those are significant things too. So I'm thankful that both of those recalls have been done. Okay. Torn Ranch, LLC. They have issued a voluntary recall because uh, there's an allergy alert, put it that way, on undeclared almonds in their organic organic dark chocolate blueberries. And I'm going to try to see if I can link a picture of their product at the end of this so that you can have an idea how it looks. The photo that I'm using is coming straight from the FDA. So, um, and funny enough, this is an amazing product that I've tried before and I really like it. I really like blueberries. I really like dark chocolate. And this product is the bomb. It's really, really awesome. So I'm glad they issued the allergy alert so that people would know that there may be some undeclared almond product. And I don't know if that means that where the blueberries are processed, some um, almonds have been processed before and things weren't properly cleaned out or whatever, but they're issuing that tree nut alert, basically. If you have questions about it, um, you can contact their customer care line at 1-800-721-1688. That's 1-800-721-1688. You can always just toss it, especially if you have one of those allergies or um a tree nut allergy, or you can return it to the store. Next, Interstate Food Products is issuing a voluntary recall of Little Hatch's Jalapeno Cream Cheese because they say it has a possible health risk. So what's that possible health risk? Well, on their, in their 14 ounce packages of this cream cheese, they say there's a possibility of listeria monocytogenes in there. Listeria can cause some, can sometimes cause some fatal injury, especially for people that are frail or elderly, people that have a weakened immune system and children. And, and so there could be serious infections. Some people have actually died. It actually has been fatal. Not in this instance, but I mean, in the past, those are some things that can happen with listeria. Listeria is something that's really important to watch out for in food. So if there's a food recall, it's really serious, which is why I keep coming on and talking about this because listeria can cause miscarriages in pregnant women, stillbirths, severe headaches, fever, stiffness, nausea, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. That's a lot that can happen from a listeria infection. So, with this product, it's important that it's either returned to the store for a full refund or toss it. And this is for the 14 ounce packages. Don't take chances on your health or the health of your loved ones, seriously. Um, if you have questions, consumers can contact the company at area code 720 626 9917. Again, that's area code 720-626-9917. And as you notice today, I'm not going through the list of all the cities in the states and where these products have been sent because some of these products are just kind of all over the place. Like the, the chocolate-covered blueberries, that dark chocolate, 
I know that's a product that has been sold in all these stores in the past, and, and, and I believe I've seen it in um, Walgreens and some other places as well. So, and I'm going to try to link some pictures up so that you can see the pictures of what these products look like and check your cupboards, check your refrigerator. Do you have these products? If you have these products, contact the company or throw them away. Yes, you can try to return them to get your refund at like the Interstate Foods for the jalapeno cream cheese which sounds really, really good. They are offering a full refund if people return that product. Um, but do take care of your health, take care of your family, take care of those that you love. Treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. Does not just mean eat like it's the last day on the planet. It means seriously, take care of yourself so that you can have the best, most productive life possible. How do you have the best, most productive life? By using wisdom, being aware of what's going on around you, being prepared for the in the event of an emergency. You know, there's a lot happening right now in the world with the economy, the gas prices going up. We just had that whole ransomware deal with the gas stations running out of gas and on the East Coast, there's a lot happening right now. And as I've mentioned before, if the trucks that transport the food that many people rely on, if, if those trucks can't make it to the store because there's no gas for them to make it to the store, what are you going to do? Do you have some beans and rice stored up? And I get it. Not everybody wants to eat beans and rice. Not everybody likes beans and rice. But it's a good thing to know that you have that stored up, that you have something that you're able to eat, that you practice preparing food out of those stores so that when you, when trouble comes, you'll know how to prepare food for yourself. You'll know how to make a meal for yourself. It's important. You want to be able to know how to prepare food for yourself that you're going to enjoy, not just something to eat like, oh, well, I guess I'm stuck with this. No, you want to be able to enjoy what you have to eat. You want to know how to have fresh water in the event that for some reason the water plants aren't working or if there ends up being um, a lack of water because it seems like there's some water shortages in some places in the nation, in America anyway. Um, so it's good to be prepared. You got to have a backup plan. You can say, oh yeah, okay, I've got this stuff and I usually shop this amount of times and I rely on this and I rely on that. But when the big storm comes, and by storm, uh, it could be a real storm or, you know, or it could be, you know, just a metaphorical storm. You know, I experienced a big storm, which I explained before, moving to a new city. And the very week that I moved to the new city, there's a huge storm with straight line winds that knocks out all the electricity Everything in my refrigerator eventually goes bad because there's no power for many, many blocks, for quite a large radius around. There was no power for over a week. And that made me think, oh, I need to learn how to be prepared for when things like this come up. How much water do I have set aside? Because everybody needs water, even if you don't like the taste of water. Everybody needs water in order for their body to function properly. Having food stored up is a good thing. And like I said, you know, people will say, hoard and store things to the hilt. But let's be realistic. Get what you need. 
And on the ready.gov page, it tells you that it's good to be prepared. They say three weeks. And when the first time I read that the government was saying three weeks, I thought, okay, maybe I should be prepared for three months. And I thought about it. No, perhaps I should stretch that out a little longer than what we had the pandemic. And I was thankful that I had things stored enough to last me a good long time to where I could just pull out the crock pot or the, or the Instapot and grab a handful of frozen onion and a handful of, of frozen celery, grab, you know, half a bag of dried beans, throw some stuff together, add the water, turn on the crock pot and let it do its thing while I was recuperating from having coronavirus virus last year. I did have people bring me food a couple of days out of that time that I was on quarantine. But for me to have to leave my home, go down all those stairs, turn the corner, go down more stairs, turn the corner, go down more stairs, to go outside, to go down more stairs, to get this bag of food that someone left for me down there. By the time I got down there, because I was having the difficulty breathing, I needed to sit down for a while just to try to catch my breath. And then I was able to go back up. And because my breathing was so labored and everything was so difficult, it took a while before I was able to even try to eat. And that food lasted me quite a bit because it's hard to enjoy eating when you can't breathe very well. It's hard to talk when you can't breathe very well. Um, but, you know, people started sending me emails and text messages. Are you going to be okay? Anything you need? Do you need any food? I was like, I'm a prepper. I've got food. <laughs> and since I have food and I have a crock pot, my crock pot and my Instapot are my go-tos. So that if need be, if I'm not doing well, I can just throw a few things in there, turn it on. Turn it on low if I'm planning on trying to get some sleep. Turn it on high if I want it to cook a little faster. Toss it in the Instapot if I want it done within the hour. And I will have something to eat that will be delicious because I also have my spices and everything as well. These are things just to think about, to be prepared. Because looking into the horizon and seeing what's coming for us in the in the future in this year in 2021, we're we've seen so much. We experienced a lot last year that people were not expecting to happen. Even though you got that core group of preppers saying, "I'm prepared, I'm prepared, I'm prepared," and yes, I was prepared too. I was one of them with the lights and the other things because of my personal experience. But now I've stepped it up another level, you know, and I make sure I have a power pack, you know, a power charger so that if the lights go out, I can plug my stuff up to that power charger, still have electricity, still be able to use like CPAP machine, a nebulizer, whatever through the night because it, it will run seven hours through the night off of that full charge. Having solar panels, and I'm in what I consider multi-site housing. I am in a condo. A condo or apartment building is considered multi-site housing. I'm in a condo. But I do have a solar panels that's a decent enough size that it's not overbearing that I can put up in my sunny window window so that when the sun rises in the east, it's beaming down on that solar panel for half a day. Helping to store energy into that charger. 
That's what I'm talking about. To be prepared for those little things. And I'll do another video where I talk more about the solar panels and that kind of stuff. Because I'm not in a house. I don't have a big ginormous pack of 20 solar panels that are all out in the yard. Because I can't do that. I'm in a condo. And in a condo association, you have to have agreement and understanding with your neighbors. And I love my neighbors, but my power is my power. I have to make sure our, my needs are met. And it's up to each person to, or each household, to be responsible for their needs being met. So, and I want to do a video more on water filtration and the Berkey versus the homemade version that you can do with a couple of buckets and three different types of rocks and sand and you know for filtering your water and and even like the camp tablets that can be used to help kind of purify the water and show you the differences between the three and what my two cho top choices are out of those three and, and exactly why. If there's something in particular that you'd like to see in a video or if you'd like for me to do a live chat, please put a note in the comment section because I would love to be able to do a live chat and interchange with you guys and talk about things because we're living in times that are changing and you don't have to be a millionaire to be a prepper. You don't have to be a millionaire to have the things that you need for times of emergency. And you also don't have to have your home overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly packed with stuff to where you are stuck in a chair and you, you can't even walk around. Because hoarding is not healthy either. It's really not healthy emotionally or physically. It's just not healthy. But I would love to show you storage ideas and, and ways that you can organize your home, especially if you're living in an apartment or a condo situation, because not everybody has five acres of land or whatever. We're not all out there chopping wood, building our houses out on some massive lot that we just so happen to have, you know, living this dream life. I don't have that, but I'm happy where I am. And you can be happy and content where you are and be prepared where you are. So I hope you'll let me help you do that. And I hope you'll continue to join me with the videos. Um, and thank you for watching today. And I look forward to hearing from you or seeing you soon.